G'day from the Hotel De La Source in Belgium. It's a little bit rainy today and umbrellas will be the order of the day. In fact, umbrellas were the order of the weekend at the track. And this post on my Instagram page was my most popular with about 40,000 likes. That's about 10% of my audience. But have you read the comments? About a third of the comments were absolutely savaging Lewis. Not much of a gentleman, is he? Hands in your pockets while she holds the umbrella. What a princess. Hold your own umbrella, Lewis. About a third were then sticking up for Lewis. Now, I don't know what your take on this is, but I can certainly tell you mine, and I'll tell you in eight seconds' time. Now, I must admit, when I posted this picture, I did have a suspicion it would be received negatively by some, not by some 30%, though. So who's holding the umbrella? Well, that's Charlotte Davies, and her role is press officer at Mercedes. So she has to accompany Lewis to a lot of the media commitments. But do you think this is people just not liking Lewis? Or is it that people just don't like women holding umbrellas for men? After all, you wouldn't find Yuki allowing a press... Oh, yes, you would. Oh, dear. Um, not Pierre... G oh, no. Pierre as well. Joe Guan Yu, he'd carry... No, he doesn't carry his own umbrella. Well, George is a gentleman. He wouldn't... Oh, yes, he would. At least Max Verstappen carries his... Oh, no, not even Max. And yet, when I post pictures like this, I get nowhere near the vitriol served up to the male driver for allowing females to carry an umbrella. Now, all of these women that I featured here are working for the team. It's their job to accompany their driver. They are paid money to do this. The drivers aren't dating them. Well, with the exception of Maxie, that's his uh, girlfriend, Kelly. And what about team principals? Would they allow someone else to carry their umbrella? Yes. Here's an example of Christian Horner and Gunther Steiner. But let's jump back to Lewis. Is this the first time a woman's held his umbrella? No. Angela used to do it quite often. But would he ever carry an umbrella for a woman? Yes. Here he is. In Turkey. Holding the umbrella for Angela. So, if you're thinking that Lewis does this all the time, there's evidence that's not the case. If I hark back to some of those pictures of other women holding the umbrellas, did I see such vitriol on those posts? Nope. Nothing like it. Might have been the odd comment but it wasn't 30%, as was the case on Thursday. So I think it's just a segment of the public that doesn't like Lewis and will look for any opportunity to bag him. Now, this picture also came from this weekend. Now, should we be having a go at Alex Albon for not holding that umbrella? Why is George holding it for Alex? Well, someone has to hold the darn thing, and it really doesn't matter. This is not a piece of heavyweight equipment. Almost anyone can carry the weight of an umbrella. You don't have to be a weightlifter. And is F1 the only sport where this sort of thing occurs, umbrellas being held by women? No, have a look at tennis. And in this case, you've got young girls holding up umbrellas for mature male athletes. So if you're going to have a go at Lewis, perhaps you should be having a go at these tennis players. Anyway, what can be done in the future to stop this sort of carry-on on the internet? Well, perhaps the drivers go down the route that Charles went with Andrea and they share the umbrella holding duties as they walk into the paddock. I find the whole thing quite remarkable and I'm absolutely certain that Lewis would have no idea about the comments being made on my page and nor would he be bothered by them if he did find out about them. Anyway, with that said, let's jump to other things I noticed at the track on the weekend and have a look at this picture of Pierre Gasly in Parc Ferme after his third place finish in the sprint race. Look at the size of Pierre's neck. This is the first time it's really stood out so much to me. These guys spend a lot of time on their neck, and as you can see with Pierre, it's paid off handsomely. On the subject of Pierre, he had his mum and dad with him this weekend, and they are delightful people. Now, somebody pointed out that Daniel Ricciardo has a new helmet supplier, and that is true. For as long as I can remember, he was with Arai, and he's changed over to Schuberth. And if you're wondering what that noise behind me is, that's the um, Belgians having a lovely time down the corner here. It's a thumping nightclub scene on every night over the Grand Prix. After the race, I went and stood around the FIA garage because you get the drivers coming out straight after the race. Well, the drivers that don't finish on the podium. And when Lando Norris came out, he came out to no one. There was none of his crew there to meet him. And I shot a couple of pics of him and then I stopped and said, there's no one here for you. And he said, yeah, they're not here. I said, can I help you? And he said, do you want to carry my helmet? And I said, yeah, I'll carry your helmet. And then he laughed and said, nah, I'll find them. So he went off to do his media commitments. What about the news of Otmar Safnauer on Saturday morning? I got some advance warning a couple of hours ahead of the announcement. 
Uh, I didn't know the person at Alpine that was being fired, but I gathered it was him, and it turns out it was. And I'm just reading this article here, news.com.au in Australia. F1 boss ruthlessly axed, team in chaos. Well, I photographed Otmar a bit on the Saturday afternoon, and he was in the paddock. And I just felt a little very sorry for the man, because obviously the rugs pulled from underneath him. But he just seemed to be a little bewildered, wandering around the paddock because he obviously was divested of all his responsibilities. And then today, I actually had a drink with him here on Saturday night and we discussed it, but on uh, Sunday today, he was up at uh, Champions Club speaking to the people and he was philosophical about it and said he would take a couple of weeks off and drive his Ford somewhere through Europe. I can't remember exactly where, but uh, it sounded like an epic trip. And he also mentioned that he'd like to get back as a team principal in the future. There are only 10 teams, but there aren't too many people that have run an F1 team, so maybe he's a chance. Girlfriends and family at this race, where well, we had Lily He, Alex's girlfriend. Alex um, actually got given a little teddy bear that Lily was walking around with on Sunday. Max Verstappen's sister was there, Victoria, with uh, her youngster, and boy, doesn't he look a lot like Max. Just killed a fly there. Well, I maimed her. Tiffany Cromwell was with us. Oscar Piastri's girlfriend Lily wasn't here, but I did meet her father, Johnny. Quite a character. No photos though. But we did have Oscar Piastri's dad. We did have uh, Lando's mum and dad. Max's dad. Sergio Perez's dad was here. And Nico Hulkenberg's father, Dieter, who's a funny man. This was a funny one. Andrea Stella, McLaren team principal, was giving a press conference. I was shooting from above. And obviously this water was running off a level below me and down his back. And he looked up and I just said, hey, it's not me. <laughs> he laughed and continued on. On the subject of that same press conference at the back of the garage, Lando came across them, walked up the stairs a little bit to get a higher vantage point, took some pics on his mobile phone and then uh, continued on with his wry grin on his face. A quick thank you to Valtteri Bottas and Oath Jin for the free cap he gave me, what bucket hat. Uh, much appreciated. So I'm up uh, at the Kemmel Strait photographing the start of the sprint race and of course it buckets down it's quite uncomfortable but I thought I'll get down low and I'll shoot through the gap in the armco so I put my knee on the ground I'm wearing shorts and then I get up and I realize I put my knee smack bang in the middle of these stinging nettles and my god for the next day I had that stinging sensation so I learned a lesson and while I was there before it started raining I took about uh, a dozen pictures of the crowd about 20 meters apart and look at this stunning elevation panorama I've got. And it's very high quality. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but if you were there, and a lot of you were actually waving and shouting to me, you're probably gonna see yourself in this. So at some point, I'll make it available somehow. I was pleased to see Yuki Tsunoda score a point for the team and get a hug from his crew out the back of the FIA garage. And I want to talk to you about the signed prints I did with Yuki. I said, look, a couple of the drivers put some funny markings on one just as a novelty and we don't actually say which numbered print it is. And he said, yeah, okay. So he wrote his name in Japanese, this one. Then he wrote something else on another one and something else on another one. Now, if you want to get one of these, I won't tell you which numbers it is. You'll have to take a punt. But certainly if you purchase the one, well, there's three actually, that have those markings on them, you've got yourself an extra bonus. Go to kimelman.com and go to the shop and pick signed prints and look for one from Yuki that's still available. And I can tell you that all three are still available. On the subject of car picks, this was my favorite picture of the weekend. Don't often see two cars side by side at this particular part of the circuit with lovely light and a great background. Now I shot one of the sessions from the bottom of Eau Rouge on the inside of the track and uh, quite frankly it's quite the most remarkable place to shoot F1. The view up that hill is mind boggling and they spark and they come through at an incredible rate of knots. It was just a real pleasure. And which cars sparked the most? The Red Bulls typically. Let me briefly touch on the weather. It was bloody awful. Rain on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. It's not at all nice to photograph in, but um, you do get some interesting looking shots. But a couple of times, you know, I'm taking shots like this, where yes, there's a car here, but you can't really see it. What's it like for these poor drivers out there? It must be horrendous. Thankfully, it all eased up on Sunday and we had uh, pretty good conditions. I think there was a little bit of light rain towards the latter part of the race, but it wasn't enough to cause any real drama. One thing I'm always amazed at is when um, People see their lifelong F1 hero, like this young girl here in the white top, glimpsing Lando as he walks past to a function. It's such a nice thing to see people who are just absolutely over the moon. And we do see that in the paddock a lot. 
A couple of you have asked, how do I achieve shots like this? Well, it's simply using a function on my Canon R3, which I gather a lot of cameras have, and that is multi-exposure. So you can set anywhere from two to, I think, 10 different exposures to go on the same frame. And what I do in this instance is actually manually zoom out as I take these four or five images. And now I have to go and catch a flight back to Australia. I can't wait to get back there. I've been on the road for three months now. But before I leave you, I'm going to remind you that you'll find all of my F1 images at ProStarPix.com for my F1 photo books, wall art, sign prints by drivers and team principals, and a range of merchandise. Go to KimIllman.com. And for my best images live from the track and during the week, Instagram's the place to be, at KimIllman. Oh, and also on threads. Thanks for watching. And stay passionate. I've got to say, oh, the f***ing helicopter, another f***ing helicopter, f*** these helicopters.